So if you haven't watched it yet, make sure you go back and watch the videos on differentials before watching this one. In this video, <clears throat> we're going to talk about estimating with differentials. So let's read it first and then we'll talk about it. Suppose we know the value of a differentiable function f of x at a point a. So we know the answer at a certain point. And we want to estimate how much this value will change if we move to a nearby point. So take your a, and add a little bit. Remember we call that little change in x dx. So we're changing x just a little bit. If dx equals delta x is small, how small? That's a relative question. Then we can see from the previous figure. So if you go back and look at the previous video, you'll see in the previous video what we're talking about here. The delta y is approximately equal to the differential dy. So if you recall, delta y was the actual change in the function value, whereas dy was the approximate change in the function value used or, which is estimated by using the linearization. So this is actually the change in L of x when going from a to a plus dx. But if dx or delta x is really small, then these two values, delta y and dy, are pretty much the same value, approximately. All right, so what does all this mean? Since the function at a plus a little bit more, so we're plugging in a little bit bigger x value, is the original function value plus a little change in the y value. So remember, this is how much the function changed when x changed by just a little bit. That's what delta y is. So because delta y and dy are approximately the same when dx is very small, we can replace the delta y with dy. So now we can use differentials to approximate how much change there is when we go from a, from a to a plus dx as our x value. So when dx equals delta x, uh, I said that. Thus the approximation delta y and dy can be used to estimate this change when f of a is known, dx is small, and dy is defined to be the derivative of the function at a, where you started, times your dx. Okay, so let me show you an example to help bring all this together. So here you can see in the picture we have a circle. The circle has a radius of 10 to start out with. Now it's a little hard to see because it's a very small change, but notice how there's a second blue line. So we've taken our radius and gone out just a little bit a Ex little bit being exactly 0.1 meters. So we have a circle of radius 10 meters, and then we increase that to a circle of 10.1 meters. What's the change, though? The change is 0.1. And remember, these are r. These are the radius dimensions. So from 10 to 10.1, the change in r the differential dr is the difference between them, how much you've increased or decreased by it. So in this case, we've increased by 0.1 meters. So that's the dr they're talking about here. So your change in your radius. So we're given the change in the radius. The question is, how much impact does that have on the area? So if you look at your circle, you can obviously see that your area has also changed because you're dealing with a bigger circle. How much has that changed? So we're going to use dA to estimate. This is not giving us the exact value. This is an estimate uh, to estimate the increase in the circle's area A. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, what's the area of a circle? Hopefully you remember that's pi r squared. Now we're going to find the differential because this relates a, what we're looking for, dA, to r, what we know about. We now need the differential relationship. So take the derivative of both sides. So dA, the differential of a, equals, all right, so pi is a constant. He chills out. The derivative of r squared, well, that's going to be 2 comes down, so 2 pi times your r, and then you have to multiply by dr, the differential of r. So remember, this is what we did in the last video, is finding the differential. To find dA, to approximate dA, how much the circle's increased by, we need to plug in our information. So remember, r is your initial radius that we're interested in, where we started. So we started at 10 meters, and then dr is how much we've changed by. So we've changed by 0.1 meters. If we plug in these two values, we'll find out approximately how much our area has changed by. So 2 pi times 10 times 0.1.
equals 2 pi. And remember, our units are meters, and this is the change in area, so this is an area. This is how much additional area we've increased by. So you can think of it as the area between the two circles, approximately. Now, that's approximately how much it's increased by. Now, let's estimate the actual area of the enlarged circle. So we want the area of the bigger circle, so the area of the 10.1 meter circle. Now, I, give, I grant it, you can find the area directly, and we're going to do that. But in order to talk about these topics of how much change there is and how good something is at approximating another function, you can't talk about how good something is at approximating if you don't have an actual value to compare it to. So this is an example where we know the truth, we have an approximation, and we want to see how close they are. So we're going to compare. So I'm not going to compute this directly yet. We'll do that in a minute. I want to compute it using the approximation. So the approximation I'm going to use is this one up at the top. Take our function, which is a, and that's going to be, instead of 10.1, let's break it up into our original a plus the dx. So our original a was 10 meter radius circle plus a 0 0.1 increase. So according to this formula at the top, we're going to take a of our function, which is a, of the original 10. We're going to add to that dA. I know it says dy up here, but our y variable in this case is the area a. So the area of a 10 meter circle, well that is our original, that we're going to actually calculate using the formula for area, so pi r squared. So pi times the r squared plus, we found dA, it's right here, 2 pi meter squared, this is meter squared as well. So we have here 10 squared, which is 100 meters, or pi meters squared plus 2 pi meters squared, add them together, and we end up with 102 meters, oops, pi, lots of pi, meters squared. So this is the approximate area by using the differentials. So the question is, how close did we get using our estimate to the actual area? To compute the actual area, you just use your area formula. So area equals pi r squared for a circle. And we're going to find the area for a 10.1 meter radius circle. So plug it in. So pi times 10.1 squared equals, so let's square it, uh, 102.01 times pi meters squared. So this is the actual area. And this is the approximate area. So how did we do? Well, to find, to actually describe how you did, you would calculate the error. So the error involved here is the difference between the two. So the actual was 102.01 pi minus our approximation, which was 102 pi. If we subtract, we get 0 0.01 pi meters squared. So if you look at that, that's a fairly small number, so, but that tells you how far off you actually were. All right? So we can use differentials to estimate. If we know how small the change is in x, we can approximate the change in y. And it, it really is something that can be useful in applications in real life. So here's one application we can talk about. We're still working with the circle, but we can talk about how far off we are, how much error we have. But just talking about how much error isn't really very informative. It's much more informative to talk about the percentage of error. So if you look at this error number here, how bad is that really? To tell how bad that really is, you need to compare it to something else. Compare it to how much area you have overall, for example. So in this problem here, it's basically what we're doing. The radius of a circle is measured with an error of at most 2%. So we have our error for the radius. Now here's a tricky part is you have to understand what this is actually trying to describe. This error of at most 2% is actually called a percentage error. Now it's over here in this box that's uh, called a percentage change. Same concept but the change is an error. It's how far off you are. So percentage error you should think of as being how far off, so we use uh, the 
differential to describe how much change there is between the actual, the original and the, the actual and what we've ended up with. So think of dr as being how much error there is, how off you are. And we compare that, how much error there is, to the actual value of the r. So the error in the radius divided by the actual radius. If your error is a very small number in comparison to the radius, then you're doing pretty good. But if your error and your radius are close to each other, that's not a very good description or a very good error. For example, if I say I have one inch of error versus a thousand inches radius, if that's the case, that's not too bad. That's a really small uh, proportion. However, if I have one inch of error compared to five inch radius, well, that's not so good. So the comparison of the two, the proportion between the error and the actual radius is what we really want to be able to talk about. So to turn this into a percentage, we simply multiply by 100, and that gives us our percent error. So in this case, it says our percent error is 2%, and then dr over r times 100%. Now notice, the formula is in terms of times 100, so it's as a percentage. So you got to be careful with that. If you want to change it to a decimal, you can. But the way the formula is written is it has the times 100. So it's the percent value equals dr over r times 100. So with this formula, we can actually rewrite this to find out um, how the relationship between r and dr is. So let's solve for one of the variables. I'm actually going to choose to solve for dr. So let's leave dr where he is, and we're going to move everybody else around. So we're going to divide by 100. Basically, I'm getting rid of the percentage, so 0 0.02. If you change 2% to a decimal, you get that value. Equals dr over r. And then you can multiply by r. 0.02 r equals dr. So this is saying that the error in the radius is equal to 0 0.02 times our actual radius value, okay? And that's the most it would be. Now, that's just the first sentence. That's just analyzing what they've given us. The question says, what is the maximum corresponding percentage error? So we're looking, going back to my red equation, percentage error, in computing the areas the circle's area. So we're not interested in R now, we're interested in the area. So let's bring that formula down, but write it in terms of area. Percentage error equals. So same thing, it's how much error is in the area. So the change in area between the actual and what your value is, the difference is the change in area. Um, proportionate to the area itself, the actual area, times 100%. Okay, now we want to find this value. The problem is, have they given us this information? No, they haven't given us dA and they haven't given us A. However, we do know some information about the area of a circle. What do we know? We know that the area of a circle is pi r squared. If we know the formula for area, we can also find the formula for the differential of area, which we already found earlier, by the way. So the differential, we just take the derivative, 2 pi r times the differential dr. Okay, so the differential of a is the derivative times dr. Hmm, if we take this information and plug it into our percentage error, we'll have a percentage error calculating the percentage error error of area, but it'll be in terms of R values, which we know some information about the R value, so let's give that a shot and see what it tells us. So let's replace dA. So dA was what we just found, 2 pi R dr, and A, we already know, is pi R squared. Don't forget your times 100. And we can reduce this. The pi's can cancel. We can cancel an R from the top and one R from the bottom. So we end up with 2 times dr over r times 100%. Well, that's interesting. So now the percentage error of area is given to us as a function of r. But we know something about r. What do we know? We know the relationship between r and dr. 
So let's bring that in and plug that into our formula. So we have it solved for dr, so we'll put it on top. So dr gets replaced with what we already found, what we were given, divided by the r on the bottom still. Okay. So we can multiply the 2 times the point 0 0.02. So we end up with 0 0.04, and the r's cancel out. Don't forget your times 100. So if we multiply 0 0.04 times 100, we end up with 4%. So as long as our radius error is a maximum of, let's say, 2%, the corresponding percentage error for area is going to be at most 4%. That's not a bad percentage, but how do you use this depends on your application. There are different levels of error that are allowed based on what you are studying. So in statistics, we can talk about a 1% or a 5% or sometimes less than that and or more than that. It really depends on what you're studying and what your application is. So is this a good percentage error? It depends on what your application is. So uh, have fun, work on your homework, study hard. I'll see you in the next video.